afternoon. I am here to speak on behalf of the horses and urge the Department of Transportation to proceed with the rule change to move the horse carriage boarding areas out of traffic on 59th Street and into Car Free Central Park. These are hearings held by the Department of Transportation to decide whether or not to move the horse-drawn carriage pack or wait line into Central Park. I see horse carriages doing illegal U-turns into oncoming traffic on one of Manhattan's busiest streets. I see horse carriages double parked, letting passengers out into the road. I see cars, I see taxis, and I see buses, and I also see horses of all of that. I am sometimes accused of caring more for the animals than I do for people. I care for both, but the truth is people have choices, the horses do not. Woo! Moving the half line into the park not only serves to achieve the DOT's plan to reduce the amount of time that horses spend alongside vehicular traffic, but accomplishes something else. New York City is the greatest city, and we can and should be a compassionate city. Let me leave you with a quote by Mark Twain. You're never wrong to do the right thing, and this is the right thing. Visit the horses practically every day. They're not abused. They should stay in 59th Street. They should remain there. They were there for the last 150 years. They're happy horses. I see them every day. And when they go in Central Park, they're going to lose business. It's not going to be good. It's not going to work out. It's not. When it's hot, they, 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 they're not working. When it's very, very cold, they're not working. They should stay for the next 200 years on 59th Street. They should stay forever on 59th I am a New Yorker, a teacher, a mother, and a voter. I support the Department of Transportation proposed rule to move the carriage horse hack line out of traffic on 59th Street and into car-free Central Park. I'm gonna just say that when I hear pleas for keeping a tradition alive, because it has existed for many years, I am thankful that some of our traditions have been abolished because they are unethical and unjust and wrong. And I hope humane progress will continue. Thank you. Think of the perfect night of romance. Dinner at an expensive restaurant, maybe a moonlit walk, or even better, a horse-drawn carriage ride under the stars. You feel the gentle breeze on your skin, hear the serenading of crickets, and the clip-clop of the horse's hooves, or actually the drag-clop, and her loud, labored wheezing, and the click-grind of teeth against metal as she neurotically chomps at the bit. Like I said, Romantic. Hi, it's Emily from Bite Size Vegan, and welcome to another vegan nugget. This video is the fourth in my series on horse ethics. 
In the first, we looked at horse riding in general and the musculoskeletal damage that it causes, as well as whether riding itself is ethical. In the second, we took a closer look at the effects of the bit in particular. And in the third, we took a hard look at possibly the largest, cruelest, and most deeply corrupt horse industry, horse racing. I strongly urge you to watch the video on horse racing to further expose the industry for what it is, a cash machine built literally on the backs of living sentient beings who are also literally ridden into the ground and discarded. But today we're going to talk about the horse carriage industry. Carriage horses are a long-standing tradition in many cities in the United States and internationally. In some areas of the world, they are still a practical means of transportation. What I'm going to focus on today are entertainment-based horse carriage rides. You can watch my video on horse riding for the ethical and vegan stance on even the practical use of horses. Also, I won't be going into the effects of the bit and harnesses as I covered those in detail in the previous videos. Horse carriage rides have been in and out of the news in the United States. States in recent years, especially with New York Mayor Bill de Blasio's 2013 campaign platform including the clear intention to ban the industry altogether and replace horse-drawn carriages with clean energy electric cars, something he is still struggling to achieve as he's repeatedly come up against strong opposition. Before I get into the arguments on either side, let's take a look back at the origins of this industry. It was roughly sometime around 6000 BC when we realized we could get animals to carry things for us. And sometime around 3500 BC, when we added wheels to a sled to make the first cart. And then sometime around 1300 BC, when we had the genius idea to shove a piece of metal between the teeth of a horse to control them better. Fast forward a good deal, and the first stagecoaches for hire were introduced in London as early as 1625. It wasn't till around 1825 that regular stagecoach services were established in the United States, with hand handsome cabs operating in major cities and stagecoach lines running on regular schedules throughout the East by the 1840s. So that's a pretty long-held tradition as far as the United States is concerned. You see, we think a hundred years was incredibly long ago. So horse-drawn carriages are a time-honored tradition. And guess what? So is animal abuse. According to Lee Siegel's engaging article, Plomping Towards Oblivion, the horse-drawn carriage business was constantly being regulated and re-regulated, but abuse of the animals was common practice. Interestingly enough, it was brazen cruelty like drivers whipping their horses openly that spurred the formation of the now well-known ASPCA, or American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, in 1866. And while the ASPCA did make headway in ensuring a higher standard of treatment for carriage horses, they also became the leading killer of horses in the city, as insurance companies wouldn't pay for lame horses if the policyholders shot them, so the ASPCA operatives would. With the rise of the automobile, by the 20s, horse-drawn carriages were becoming more of a romantic luxury, or quaint and charming activity. In New York City, the carriage horses were limited to the area around and inside Central Park in 1989. Since then, multitudes of various rules and regulations have come and gone. Temperature and time limits, vacation mandates, and the like. So, let's look at the arguments for and against the carriage horse industry. Opponents cite the sobering array of horse-drawn carriage accidents, resulting in property destruction and the severe injury or even death of horses and humans alike. The majority of the accidents are caused by horses spooking, meaning being frightened and taking off or acting erratically. A survey of national carriage horse accidents found that 70% of the time there was a human injury and 22% of the time there was a human death. The survey also found that in New York City, which has the highest carriage horse accident rate in the country, 98% of the horses who spooked became injured. Injuries and fatalities resulting from collisions between cars and horses have occurred in almost every city that allows carriage rides. Carriage horses also sometimes collapse from heat exhaustion which can and has been fatal. Aside from the incidents and injuries, horse-drawn carriage opponents also cite the objectionable living and working conditions. While there are supposed to be time and temperature limits for carriage horses, the spokeswoman for the New York City carriage industry, Christina Hansen, was caught on tape in July 2014 giving a carriage ride after the city had suspended drivers due to the extreme heat. 
horses are afforded no federal protection under the Animal Welfare Act, so the responsibility for looking out for the horse's welfare falls to local animal control officials, who often simply don't have the time, resources, or even interest to properly enforce city mandates. These horses are working nine hours a day, breathing in exhaust fumes, and trudging along on hard pavement. Veterinarian Jeffy Rozelle states that tracheal washes and samples from respiratory secretions of these horses showed enormous lung damage, the same kind of damage you would expect from a heavy smoker, adding that carriage horses are truly living a nose-to-tailpipe existence. Sadly, their off hours aren't much brighter. In New York City in particular, carriage horses live in a multi-storied stable that they have to walk up and down to their sometimes windowless 60-square-foot stall. Raids on stables have found standing excrement, rotten floorboards leading to broken legs, and lack of fresh water and food. This is not to say that all carriage horse stalls are in deplorable condition. But regardless, these animals go from walking in circles on concrete in clouds of exhaust to walking up several stories to their closed concrete stalls. With the constant walking and standing on hard surfaces, veterinarian Holly Cheever states that lameness and hoof deterioration are inevitable. So, what happens when these horses' bodies finally betray them? Like most failed racing horses, the final destination for many carriage horses is slaughter. They are sent to auction to be sold for a pittance, shipped to Canada or Mexico, and slaughtered for pet food or overseas human consumption. It's a terrifying, painful, and thankless end to their life of servitude. So, what are the arguments for keeping this industry around? Well, carriage rides are kind of fun. Okay, that's not the only reason given. Those fighting to save the industry mainly cite tradition and the jobs of the carriage drivers, and are sure to mention that in New York City, carriage horses have a mandated five weeks a year in open pastures. Talk about your lavish vacation, eh? Making the news many times, Actor Liam Neeson is surprisingly passionate about this issue, telling Jon Stewart that these guys treat their horses like their children, to which Stewart aptly responded, would not be seen as good parenting by the Division of Youth and Family Services. The stronger argument from this camp, in a sense, is that horse carriage drivers will be jobless with the dissolution of the industry. This argument is also often used against a worldwide shift to veganism. What would the workers of the animal products industry do? Well. With progress comes the loss of certain jobs, but the creation of others. Think about technology and all of the jobs that it has displaced, yet simultaneously created. There are people whose job it is to manage social media accounts. They are paid to tweet. Who saw that coming? On another note, think of it this way. If we found a way to cure all of the diseases in the world, doctors would be out of work. If we found a way to end all crime, law enforcement would be out of work. If we cured mental illness, therapists would be scrambling to support themselves. And hell, if we abolished all forms of animal exploitation, I'd have to make videos about cats or something. And also, just because you can make money from something doesn't make it right. The fact that people will lose their jobs and have to find alternative means of employment after the dissolution of an unjust industry does not make the industry just. We're talking dollars to lives. You can get another job, but these horses have but one life, and it's not meant to be spent like this. Now go live vegan, and I'll see you soon. So if Liam Neeson thinks that the way carriage horses are treated is how you treat your children, Someone should really check on his kids. In 2008, I made the documentary film Blinders about the controversy surrounding horse-drawn carriages in New York City. And today I'm here to speak on behalf of the horses and the members of the Department of Transportation. I don't know if you're aware, New York City has no humane law enforcement. So conditions are worse today than they've ever been before with no humane law enforcement out in the streets. This improvement, which would give them a little bit of relief, is long overdue. Horses are grazing animals, yet New York City has no pasture. So these horses see the grass, and they're chopping at their bits, literally, to be able to graze, but they can't because New York City has no pasture. Horses are also herd animals, but because New York City has no pasture, they have no opportunity to interact with each other physically. They have been stripped of the ability to do anything that comes naturally to them so that this industry can make a buck. 
Horses, their presence on Central Park South has been normalized. I think most New Yorkers see them and tourists see them and they just make the assumption that everything's okay. But there's nothing okay about having horses working alongside double-decker buses, aggressive taxi drivers, pedestrians, pedicabs, and bicyclists. These are prey animals. They're not predators. They're prey animals. And how many horses over the years have spooked on Central Park South by a horn? Moving them into the park, which is just steps away, would protect them, not only from the chaos of Central Park South, but also from the fumes that they ingest all day long. Horses are not motor vehicles, but by forcing them into parking spots on Central Park South, we are treating them like inanimate objects. So I am here to testify in favor of this move to get them off the streets <coughs> into Central Park. I love horses, as many of you do, but I also love people, don't yell at me, more. But one of the problems with the Department of Transportation's plan, and I'm not going to speak about that because that's too complicated, is one of the designations is West 72nd Street. I live across the street and represent the 225 families in my building, and our board has submitted a letter, which I hope will go into the record here, opposing strawberry fields as yet another place for congestion and all those bad things that people have been talking about. That's what we have. Hundreds and hundreds of people go into strawberry fields every day. There are often five tour buses parked at the head of 72nd and the entrance to the park. We have not only tour buses, but we have pedicabs, bike tours, tours of the park. We have buses on their way to the Museum of Natural History. We have a city bike station on the corner. I, as a senior citizen, don't go in the park that way anymore because it's too dangerous. I'll be knocked over. It's the entranceway for most of the marches and events that go on in the park. The New York Marathon, which has thousands and thousands, they all come out on the Street and Central Park West. This Saturday, there was a global citizen festival on the Great Lawn, but they all lined up starting at 7 in the morning at 72nd Street because the police had put barricades there for the people with ticket holders. I love the horses. Whatever you do to the horses for their benefit, I approve. But please don't bring them into 72nd and Central Park West. Everybody who believes that the act line should be moved into Central Park, I also don't feel that horse-drawn carriages belong in New York City. With that said, I'll also tell you these drivers do not care about these horses. They see them as vehicles. They treat their cars better than these horses. I have three incidents, and I have pictures on my camera that I'll be more than happy to show the DOT. I made 311 complaints in the last month and a half that I happened to have come upon. The first one was July 31st at 12.30 p.m. around that time, lunchtime, hot day high 80s, real field in the 90s. Horse-drawn carriage driver by Tavern on the Green, sitting in the shade. Horse was out baking in the sun. I was extremely upset. I'm walking and I see this. I was gonna say something. And this woman was standing there. There happens to be a person who works at my bank, loves horses. She told me not to say anything. She was finding information about the horse. She said the horse was kept terribly. He looked so much older than he should have. His hair, he wasn't groomed properly. He still had his winter coat. His teeth were bad. That was the first incident. The second incident took place on September 13th at around 5 o'clock p.m. A horse-drawn carriage again near Tavern on the Green had the horse standing in his own excrement. I said something, and he just laughed at me. I said something again, because you're funny. and then he challenged me, and I took out my camera, and he started to move the horse. So I have those pictures if you want to see them. That's how much these people care about the horses. Third incident was on September 26th, right when there was a huge thunderstorm that everybody knew about. The horse-drawn carriage was coming down my street, and he just let the horse stand there in that horrible thunderstorm. My name is Frank Raw. I've been the horse carriage driver for the past 23 years. Horse carriage is already being very well regulated by the city. Horse carriage has been on 59th Street for the past 150 years. For our business, visibility is the key point. And 99% of the custom is come from walk-up fare. So this moving to the Central Park for our business is going to give us a significant impact. So I demand the DOT to do an impact study before make this move. This is just another way to ban the horse carriages. The mayor just want to fulfill his political promise because this is going to cost us 200 jobs and there's more than 200 families. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Salvatore Galina. I have four children. I'm a butcher. 
Now my kids love to, a fourth generation butcher. Born in Sicily, where my grandfather used to milk the cow right in a cup and give it to me. Push the chickens away and give the eggs to me. I have picked up my kids in school with horse and carriage. I'm not for one side or the other, but I'm just letting all the animal rights activists know that as humans have their own trades, so do horses. Doctors, lawyers, horses have their trades too. You have the working horse, the show horse, the race horse. These animals weren't born to be left on a pasture and just live off what they could find on the ground. French eat 500,000 race horses a year. That's where you should be having your animal rights movement in France. My name is Joshua Michael Sawsville, and I was a reincarnated carriage horse in another life. And it was fine. Got a lot of oats. Look, we all saw the map. We all know what's going on. If the new rule means that we have to spend more time on the street than ever, it doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help the horses. It doesn't help the drivers. It's very obvious that the only goal is to hurt a business. Because the mayor, God bless his soul, was embarrassed that we didn't die the quiet death that he needed us to. And we're sorry, but we just couldn't afford it. So that's the way it is. But I'd like to speak directly to Mayor Bill. Bill, what are you doing? What are you doing, Bill? You could be a national politician, but you're humiliating yourself by staying on this carriage horse thing. If you ruin this business, the only thing anyone will ever think of for the rest of your career is horse carriages. Every time they hear the name Bill de Blasio, it will be the end of you. Maybe a guest spot commentating on CNBC. I don't know. Don't do this. Just leave us alone. We're fine. The horses are fine. The drivers are fine. Everybody's fine. We all love horses. We're all here for the horses. That's the whole point. Let the people who know the horses do their jobs. I do want to applaud the paper mache horse hats. You guys are awesome. My name is Michael Brachi. I am speaking on behalf of my partner who was not willing to work me. online for two and a half hours outside in the heat. And he is also a civil engineer of the city of Amsterdam. Again, a city that doesn't store their trash outside and doesn't torture your animals on the streets. I also attended public university, the city of University of New York. I lived on the corner of 57th Street and 10th Avenue for 13 years. I had to navigate across 59th Street every day, five days a week for 13 years. One of the most dangerous aspects of navigating to a public university was uh, navigating myself in a bike around the horse carriages. They leave piles of shit in the street. I think as a dog owner, if I am responsible for picking up the feces of my pets, I think the horse carriage industry should be responsible for picking up their horse shit. Secondly, I've never in my life experienced such racial comments, but when the Asian woman was up here, the racist comments that came from the two men of color behind us that came from the man with the gray blue shirt in the third row is disgusting. How dare you tell a woman because she's Asian, to go eat a dog. You're disgusting, sir. You guys are disgusting. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. I'm sorry. And this whole industry needs to be banned. Get a job at Target. Target is opening up on Target. Target. Hey, uh, 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 curve. Curve. Uh, uh, it's my job. Uh, I'm not a target. I don't want to run on the target. Uh, Listen, this is the industry. We all feel really strongly about what we're going to say. And we, we are sitting up here, want to make sure that we can. Okay. okay. And then the Bronx. There are 16 horse-drawn carriages, and each horse with a carriage attached takes over two parking spaces. This results in over 100 parking spots de dedicated alone to this industry. During the morning, especially during weekdays and rush days, there is less, less customers, so these horse-drawn carriages are often double parked, which turns the two westbound lanes into one westbound lane and impedes traffic. Regarding their businesses, while well, both the pedicabs and tour buses have salespeople at specific quarters soliciting for customers and directing them to their pedicabs or tour buses. The tour buses were moved recently from 6th Avenue to Broadway, and the pedicabs and bike rentals are inside Columbus Park entrance. 
I have seen horses making U-turns, and I've seen those U-turns actually close all four lanes, both east and westbound, for a few seconds, and it actually impedes traffic flow. This doesn't help the horses much, but it definitely helps the traffic and helps free up needed parking spaces. I never understood how this industry that doesn't pay any concession fees to the park continues to bully the city. I said the city belongs to them, but the city belongs to all of us. Regardless if we're faggot, regardless if we're Mexican, I don't care what you call us, this belief, the city belongs to all of us. And it belongs to the horses. And shame on the city council for not passing the ban. But this is a, a step forward, a very small step. But I'm all for it. And I'm getting paid to be here. And I'm not no financial interest to this. I'm just here on the right side of the issue. So thank you so much. I reside in the town of Belle Rose, New York. And I'm here to read a statement, a letter on behalf of veterinarian Dr. Roberto Tetti of Genoa Manor Sanctuary. To whom this may concern, I have been a licensed and practicing veterinarian for the last 18 years. And I have been the steward of Chinoa Manor a non-profit sanctuary and learning center for the past 14 years. For greater than the last decade, I regularly work with eight to 10 horses seven days working, a week. I'm in support of the New York Department of Transportation's proposed rule change to move the carriage horses boarding area out of traffic on 59th Street and into designated areas of Central Park. Horses have not spent the last 50 million years evolving into beings that stand on concrete jungles for countless hours every day on unnatural substrates, breathing in toxic exhaust fumes from the overcrowded and polluted roadways, parading people through noise-filled streets. Certainly these animals deserve better. Considering the countless ways horses have been forced into servitude for man, from violent war acts to superficial circus performances, they deserve a chance to have the life biologically evolved to live. Respectfully, Dr. Roberto Tetti, DVM. I've witnessed where some of the horses come from. I've been to New Holland auction in Pennsylvania. Steve Malone gets his horses and dumps his horses at this disgusting facility. They have been known for animal abuse and investigated in 2015. Thank you very much.